Poo! Poo! Do you know what though? It's hard poo. Yeah. That's all right, we could fling it. Fling. <laughs> Flick the hard poo. See, this is what I love. You've never noticed that poo with no. no shoes on. No. Hi and welcome to The Running Channel. I'm Anna and today I'm going to be joined by another Anna. So Anna McNuff is a barefoot runner and she is going to be running around Britain with no shoes on. So I am really interested to get her tips on barefoot running, how to start, what the challenge involves and everything in between. So I'm off to go and meet her and have a little go at it myself as well. Don't forget, if you're new around here, we upload new videos all about running every week. So make sure you subscribe, tap the bell icon and you'll get notified when we do. super busy because you're heading off to start your amazing journey. Tell me about your challenge. Uh, yeah, I'm setting off tomorrow. I've got to go a long way north to the Shetland Islands to start a 2,620 mile run with no shoes on. As you do? As you do, right. cash. Just got bored. <laughs> Just thought, why not? But let's go back to the start. Like, where did that come from? Where's this idea come from? Well, I was thinking about doing a new running adventure and I thought, okay, I think I want to do it in Britain because I've always been abroad and I feel like I want to see what Britain's like and kind of connect with the people and the runners of Britain. And then I thought, well, I've done a long run with shoes on in New Zealand before, so how do I take it to that next level of challenge? And especially as I'm talking to young women all the way along about doing things that scare them. So this thought just entered my head, why don't you do it without shoes on? And I thought straight away, that's ridiculous, you can't do that. And then I thought, well, if I think I can't do it, then maybe that's sort of something to explore. So that was how it started. It, as a ridiculous idea, basically, is how it began. Amazing. Yeah. So a lot of preparations had to go into that, right? You can't just take yeah. your shoes off and just go, do you know what, I'm going to run 2,000 miles with no shoes on now. No, I think much as it was a crazy idea, I was actually realistic. And I thought, I can't just, you know, yeah, like you say, just, just take off the next day. So it was, I think I had the idea about two and a half years ago. Yeah. And, I, and I didn't tell anyone for a long time, just secretly tried to work out if it was possible. And when I got to the point where I think just about possible, that's when I started telling people. Yeah, so I prepared for about a year and a half. And what's that preparation? What does it look like? Like, how do you prepare to run better? Um, it's a, a long, like, I, <laughs> so as I, I first of all just started reading books because I thought, great, I'll just read about it. That's what you do at school. Born to run, right? Born to run. That's it. I just absorbed it into the fibres of my being and then thought, great, I am from the Tarahumara now. All I need to do is take off with some tyres on my feet. Um, and then I realised actually the only way to learn to run barefoot is to run barefoot yeah. and that everyone's body's different. So, but I started, I spent a few years in minimalist trainers and then I went down to wearing socks with kind of a thick rubber bottom. Yeah. And then I went down to the last six months, I've been completely barefoot and I sort of did that in three phases. So I'd go out for a run and I'd be in my trainers, but I'd have my, my socks in my backpack and then I'd swap in them for a couple of miles and then I'd eventually be in just my socks and then a couple of miles barefoot and then eventually I'd leave the socks at home which was a big moment. Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah, especially if you're on a time deadline, if you've got two hours for a run and you head out the door and then you hit some farmer's gravel and you end up hobbling. Oh! Yeah, farmer's gravel. I Not mean, good. I've done Brighton Beach with yeah. no shoes on and that's, that's hard enough. You, actually, that still remains one of the hardest surfaces. Brighton Beach is really? hardcore. Yeah, so you're officially nails. That's Yay! it. Next level. So when you, when you first start, there must be some like adaptations that you have to make to your running style to actually get used to running with no shoes on. Yes, yeah, because the first thing you want to do is you, you straight away go right onto your toes, but you have this tendency not, not to put your heel down. And actually yeah. you want your heel to go down because you, you need that spring to support yourself. So I think the first, the first thing that happens is, yeah, it's a bit odd and your body does some strange things to compensate, but then you get a bit more relaxed with it. And, and I think everyone does it differently, but I've ended up with this sort of gliding, high cadence, shuffle, swan thing that looks ridiculous, but is very efficient for long distances, barefoot running. It so. sounds awesome. I'm looking forward to seeing <laughs> I'm that. I'm a weirdo, basically. It's great. <laughs> That's so awesome. And like, has there been any ridiculous situations that you've got yourself into running barefoot? Like, obviously, Everyone wants to know, have you run in dog poo? Oh, have you, like, all of the good stuff. Uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah, urine, vomit, dog poo, bit of glass. Um, but then on the flip side, you get amazing surfaces like spongy pine forests and the Yorkshire Dales. Oh, lovely. Um, but there was one run I headed out for in New Zealand where I, was, I went out there for the winter to train because I tried running in the snow in Britain. 
didn't go so well. Oh, really? Yeah, it's very slippy as well as oh, cold. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so I went to New Zealand and thought, great, I've got this. And then by that point, I thought I could just run over any surface. And then I hit the kind of gravelly farmer's track. And an eight kilometre run must have taken me about two hours and been really embarrassing because everyone was running past me, looking at me, thinking, what's she doing hobbling around with no shoes on? Yeah. Um, and that's when I realised there will always be some surfaces, unless I've been running since I was a kid barefoot, that I can't run over and that I have to just hop around the edge or go slowly. Yeah. Yeah. And you did London Marathon. I did. It with was no awesome. Shoes on. I did. I did. I was really nervous, nice. but it was it is such a good day out. Yeah. It was just I mean, it's just the best of humanity, isn't it? You just everyone's screaming and shouting and the comments were hilarious through the start of it. Blackie, like, oh, that girl's got no shoes on. And then they'd say, go on, Anna. Go, go on, Anna. When they saw I was wearing shoes. So it was pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. And you had a you had a sweeper lady as well checking for your I did. Your Irish sweeper lady. I, I don't know who she is, but she just appeared after about mile four. I was like, oh, I'm so worried about your feet. <laughs> oh, my God. And then she just circled me for the next 10 minutes going, be, why don't I be wearing barefoot, barefoot? <laughs> and I was like, thanks, sweeper lady. You can, you can stay. That's yeah, amazing. I love that. You're going to show me some barefoot running techniques. Absolutely. Awesome. Thank You're you. Up for it. Great. So I um, I need to take my shoes off basically. You do. And get some tips from you about how to barefoot run. And I know that you said that the best way to barefoot run is to just go and run barefoot. There are right? no okay. shortcuts. Right. Get them off. Take the shoes off. Do you want some striptease music? Oh yeah. Go on. Oh, and bum, bum. painted the toenails. Just oh, for you. look at those bad boys. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> It's like a right. perfect colour wheel, isn't it? Red and pink. Yeah, or, or, or clashy. Or clashy. Or clashy, it's fine. Right, okay, I'm off. Oh, this You're is, in. This is nice. How does, does it feel nice? It's like being on the school playing field. You, 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 that's, what, that's what barefoot running makes me feel like a kid. I feel yeah. like I've been let out to play. Yeah. It's like, it is freedom. And you're yeah. going to go and do some cartwheels and things like that. Like, it just remind. it really reminds me of being at primary school. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think that was the last time I had my shoes off on but, You know, in New Zealand, the kids, like, up until age 12, they don't wear shoes, which is where I got the idea. Brilliant. But, yeah, great. I'm pleased for you. And I need to get rid of this tan line from I mean, where I've worn shoes. You are rocking it, but <laughs> we could get rid of that. Yeah. yeah, we could try. Great. OK, so we just run. We just run. We just Let's run. Go Let's go for run. it. So what are you noticing about your barefoot running? Because I don't know much about your normal running style. So I run on my tiptoes anyway okay you do yes. right okay good so i feel like i'm definitely not getting any heel action in ah right yeah in okay so that is the first thing that's going to happen when you're barefoot running the first thing to, that naturally you will do is be very toe strikey yes. but a lot of people hold their heels up in the air and don't actually let their heels come down yeah which is something you need to try and do because that's where all your spring and support comes from is your heel got you so you kind of want to do it like a do do like front yeah. back front back yeah and, and try and get to more of a flatter foot yeah because you were saying you were like literally gliding along yeah gliding because if you, if oh, you yeah. go really bouncy like up in the air on your toes you'll see your shoulders go up and down loads yeah, yeah. whereas what i've been trained to do is try and keep my shoulders level you up your cadence a little bit oh, and then yeah. you glide along like a Ooh. swan and i guess as well that means that you just have to do some extra kind of strengthening -y kind of yes work. i can show you some of them yes, a please. workout for one's arch oh, of yes. the foot yeah let's do an arch workout. oh let's do it let's Come on. arch it out <laughs> right okay so you're going to take me through some strengthening exercises and we are runners so we know that these are probably not something that you do every day no. because we yeah. only <laughs> stretch and life happens yeah. The dog eats your homework. Yeah, all that stuff. and running takes more time and we like to run more. Agreed. But for barefoot running, there are some, some tips that you can show us to, to get your feet stronger. Yep, okay. absolutely. Yeah, I got these from the running lab. Which, and so you stand on one foot like okay. this. And then I want you to imagine you've got almost like one, two, three, four, eight points around you. Okay. And so the first thing is just to balance on one foot. And the idea that I was told is you've got to try and keep that toe down. Keep Ooh. that big toe down. Yeah. And then you push out there. And you as bring far it back, you yeah, and then you touch the ground, Ooh. and then you push it out, and you would do 12 of them. I don't know if your arch of your foot is starting to hurt yet. I can, or the, I can your, feel it. Yeah, what are you feeling? Okay, cool. But so, I think like the wobble as well is there. Yeah. It makes my foot, my foot wants to go out. Yes, a it does. Bit. And then how's your big toe doing at staying down? It's, it's, it's staying because I'm making it, but okay. I am really making it. Cool. And then you try, so we'll try one in that back corner over there. So we'll kind of diagonal back. Ooh. How's that one? That's staying interesting. down. Oh, yeah. No, yeah. it's like, oh, no, no, I want to come up. <laughs> That's <laughs> it. And that big toe staying down means that you're going to be able to spread your weight a lot more ah. as you go, as you're running along. And basically it's just strengthening. So you would do kind of these just mm -hmm. like 
10, 12 times in each direction. Yeah. And then my favourite one yeah. is you kind of swing out to the side, you pop like that, Ooh. shabang, like Charlie Chaplin, yeah. and then you tippy toe over there. Oh, so like a... Pap, and then you're turning. Yeah. Ding. Because your foot is then... Oh, yeah. It's like... Feet, yeah. Oh. Did you find that there were bits of muscles that you started using completely differently to how you used them when you were in shoes? Yeah, I really struggled with my Achilles. I had what's called a cheeky Achilles, which is a technical term. Not che a cheeky Nando. <laughs> no, a cheeky Nando's. I had a cheeky actually, Achilles. It is actually a cheeky Achilles. A cheeky Achilles okay. for a, probably a good six months. Ooh. And that was just, my calves weren't strong enough. And so my Achilles was doing a lot of the work and it just got a bit sore, but it was fine. It was moderate level. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so then I started, every time I went up the stairs at home, I would try and make myself do 50 calf raises and that helped yeah. and, and that managed to the Achilles calm down and a lot of stretching as well which yeah. I know you always get told but actually stretching kids stretching kids yes. safety first safety first yeah but it rolling. really helped <laughs> Good. it really helped yeah so tell me about your challenge so obviously we've touched upon the fact that you're going north north you're Way running off. more than 2,000 miles and yeah. uh, just tell me about what it is that you exactly are doing yeah so it is uh, over five and a half months so it is the distance of a hundred marathons barefoot but I won't be running a marathon every day. I'm starting off a bit less and then building up. So sometimes it'll be more, sometimes it'll be less. Yeah. But the main aim is to go into girl guiding units because I'm a guiding ambassador and uh, talk to young girls so all the way along. So I think that is what will propel me from one place to the next when I'm having a really dark day and I'm thinking, what am I doing? Which is probably going to be five days out of the week, I think. Then standing in front of those girls with my grubby feet and saying, you know, I think this is possible, but I'm not quite sure. I'm terrified, I'm excited that's what's going to keep me going yeah. and also seeing britain you yeah know, in, with your bare feet as well i just yeah i'm excited you're gonna dip your toes in the sea and i in, in the, the north, north sea, sea. yeah oh, absolutely <laughs> no, north sea and then what else am i looking forward to i'm really looking forward to yorkshire dales yeah i think that's going to be beautiful and the pennines as well i've done a little bit of running up there a lot of cow poo yeah a lot of cow poo in the pennines okay. yeah so we'll have to watch out for that because you're not yeah. supposed to like wash and bathe your feet, right? No, so I found that I can't have baths, which <laughs> everyone says, great, soak your feet. I mean, I can have baths, like I'm not, I have washed. She does smell, guys. <laughs> I'm joking, I'm joking. <laughs> um, but yeah, if you bathe your feet too much, they go soggy and all that hard skin you've built up falls off. Yeah. So um, I use this stuff called Ripstop, actually, which is what gymnasts use on their hands. Oh, okay. Yeah, so it's- Is it like chalky? It's, um, no, it's more like um, coconut oil. It's a mixture of all these different oils, but it comes in a little pot and yeah. it keeps my skin sort of from cracking basically and yeah. keeps it dry and supple and not not dry and supple wow that's awesome yeah. so like i guess people who are going to be helping you out along the way and be like do you know what annie you've had such a hard day you must yeah. need a bath yeah you are literally like no i'm gonna say well, yeah great or just, I'll, just I'll, I'll accept it and then i'll stick my feet out which, <laughs> which again is agony because i want to stick my feet out of the bath i want to soak and but, uh, yeah i mean obviously for me being a girl i've got to ask all the girly questions do it You've got pink toenails, you've got beautifully paint, painted toenails I have currently. Got, I have got painted toenails at the moment, yeah. We're going to keep the, the painted toenails as well for Absolutely, the challenge. Absolutely, 100%. They are going to be wow. changing colour to yellow and black, but we're keeping it the whole way through. Brilliant. Yeah, yeah. and uh, you know, maintenance-wise on your feet, like, is it minimal maintenance for you? Like, I think so, because the thing about barefoot running is I, I think people look at my feet and expect them to be kind of gnarled and rank. Yeah, she's w got beautiful feet. <laughs> Honestly, I've been eyeing up your feet. They're not bad. You've got bad. really nice toes. Well, people should love, thanks very much. <laughs> They're very monkey toes. <laughs> um, but I think because they're out in the open all the time, you know, yeah. they're not, there's no friction on them. They're not, they're not clogged up in anything. So actually they're breathing and anything, any cuts, they just heal because they're in the open air. Yeah. So um, hopefully I won't have to do too much maintenance. Yeah. We'll, we'll see how it goes. But I am fascinated to what they're going to be like at yeah. the end. You know, are they going to be these huge webbed duck feet? Yeah. Who knows? <laughs> Who Will knows? I grow an extra toe? <laughs> Who knows? Let's hope not. That Let's, would be Let's really hope weird. not. I don't want that. With um, like cuts and things, yeah. so obviously there are nasty bits on the ground, and sometimes you can't help it. It might even just be a sharp rock or something. Yeah. What do you what what do you do about that? Do, you know, have you experienced any of that in your training or? Like... Yeah, li little bits. You know, a bit of glass stuck in my foot from running down the back of a train station. Um, grazes I've got cut foot at the moment from stepping on a piece of rock. Yeah. A lot of bruising actually. You get a lot of which is what you would have experienced on Brighton Beach probably if yes. you run over that. <laughs> just, oh, it's bringing it back. Which <laughs> is, it has more painful than the cut sometimes because <laughs> it goes deep, man. Yeah. Um, but I figure with that kind of stuff, I've just got to deal with it when it happens. Mm. You know, it's like anything if i 
I had a friend that said to me, what's going to happen when you step on a broken iron brew bottle in Glasgow? Which I love that that is just the foregone conclusion. She was genuinely serious. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I figure I just, I'll deal with it at the time. Yeah. I, will, I will work it out. I'm going to avoid everything. And your brain gets better at processing the ground you're running on as well. Yeah. Because I spent the first two months staring like this with a really sore neck looking at the ground just looking for like obstacles and hazards and yeah, stuff yeah yeah and now i've become more of a scanner I'm oh like, okay yeah yeah yep. so i've kind of evolved yeah hopefully good luck with your challenge thank you so much thank you for coming to see us and for getting my shoes off oh like, you're so welcome i feel liberated Woo! um I, I don't know that i'm probably going to go and do like i've got track tonight yeah okay so i'm probably not going to do track in them in no shoes but i promise that i will go and run without any shoes on little, like, just a little bit just yeah. a cheeky little just a yeah. little one okay, good. just a good. little one and and see how it goes okay so, yeah. deal thank you so much you're welcome <laughs>